we starting now uh, our second part of uh, the second day of our plenary. Welcome back to all of you. The next point on our agenda is the debate with the members of the Conference on the Future of Europe Plenary Working Group on European Democracy. During last week's meeting in Strasbourg, I had the chance to meet and exchange with all of you. And it is a great pleasure to welcome you today in our plenary. Uh, unfortunately online because of the COVID measures uh, and uh, it is uh, of course the pleasure of our members and of myself uh, to welcome you today in the Committee of the Regions. So let us start our debate uh, dear colleagues uh, and uh, dear delegates to the Conference on the Future of Europe as, as you very well know our delegation to the conference consists of regional and local politicians who come from all over Europe and who have different approaches of course ideas hopes this is the reflection of the diversity of our union after all yet there is a common denominator that binds all of us our common goal to promote and strengthen democracy and this means consolidating the role of representative democracy at every level of government local regional national european and even propose new tools of participatory democracy in order to promote inclusion if we want to build a stronger sense of belonging to the european project we need fully transparent actions and decisions. We need to build trust between elected representatives and the citizens, eliminating divisions and antagonisms, promoting concrete actions at the regional and the local level to ensure participatory, proactive and functional democracy that delivers for the citizens. And for the local and regional authorities, this means acting as close as possible to the citizens, led by the principle of subsidiarity, assuring at the same time the principle of proportionality. This does not mean less Europe. It means more Europe, with better governance, so that we can make sure that every decision and every act directly improves the lives of the citizens in the places they live in. Dear colleagues, all democratically elected officials at every level of government have a mandate to deliver for the people according to their competences. So this is not and must not be a struggle between members of the European Parliament, members of national parliaments and regional local councils. No, this is a call for better cooperation a call for less bureaucracy and for more accountability and transparency. And the good news is that we do not need a treaty change to improve the governance of the European Union. Better interinstitutional cooperation and coordination can make a significant difference today in accordance to the present treaties. So the proposals set out by the Task Force on Subsidiarity a couple of years ago can also help us in our search for concrete and realistic solutions to pave the way to better lawmaking. Dear colleagues, I sincerely hope that the Working Group on Democracy will bring innovative ideas and make the Conference on the Future of Europe a useful tool for all our citizens and our Union's future. This conference is an opportunity to demonstrate the best of our Union, its ability to be open, transparent and hold a constant constructive dialogue with all sectors of society. And above all, this conference needs to bring change to Europe because it is one thing to open the dialogue with the citizens, listen to their concerns and then not do anything. And it's a different thing after listening to their ideas and their proposals to act, 
the citizens expect from us action. So after we have listened, we have discussed, we have heard all of their proposals, anxieties, beliefs, or disbeliefs, we need to act. So this conference on the future of Europe, in order to be a success, it needs to end somewhere and to bring a concrete result into action. Nevertheless, it must result in a true, tangible change in the lives of people. It has to be the beginning of a permanent two-way dialogue so that Europe listens to the people and finally brings solutions to their needs. Thank you very much. And I would like to now give the floor to our first speaker, Reynold Lopatka, who is a member of the Austrian Parliament and who I understand has his birthday today. So happy birthday, Mr. Lopatka, and thank you very much for being with us today. You have the floor. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry uh, that I cannot see you and I think you cannot see me, but I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, we can hear you very well. Go ahead. Okay. I am here in Strasbourg uh, because we have a meeting of the Council of Europe. And so I continue. Thank you very much for the invitation. You know, last Friday we had the plenary and in the plenary, of the Conference of the Future of Europe, uh, we discussed in panel two, European democracy. And here uh, we had adopted the citizens, uh, European democracy recommendations. It was a list of 39 recommendations, but unfortunately, these recommendations have completely forgotten about the role of national and regional parliaments. I think it's a big mistake. Then, as you mentioned before, the fundamental question is, what do we need for a stronger Europe? To begin with, the EU needs democratic legitimacy. And of course, the direct involvement of the European citizens is important. But the European Commission, which is appointed, also needs the support of national parliaments and regional and local entities. And moreover, the democratic legitimacy of the whole EU system and the EU legislative process relies on the involvement and support of this sub-EU entities. For the national parliaments, this important function is enshrined as a fundamental principle of the EU in Article 10 of the EU Treaty. But however, what do we see? We are currently seeing an opposite development. The influence of national and regional parliamentarians has decreased year by year. I give you two examples which prove this. First example, we have more and more EU regulations and less and less EU directives. In the year 2000, we had 16 regulations. 2021, we had 73 a decrease here from 16 to 73. In the year 2000, we had 39 directives. Last year, we had only nine directives. It's going down dramatically. But only directives, unlike regulations, give national parliaments and regional legislative assemblies the chance to be fully involved as lawmakers in this procedure. This means that over the last 20 years, there was a silent but important transformation, weakening national and regional legislation and transferring power to Brussels. We see now four times more regulations, as I mentioned, from 16 to 73. A development that not only threatens the principle of subsidiarity, it also causes more centralism and in some parts overregulation. I give you a second example. We observe the same upward trend in the number of delegated legal acts. 
which are not subject to subsidiarity scrutiny by national parliaments. The number of delegated legal acts increased from 38 in 2012 to 185 in 2021. National parliaments have no chance here to intervene. We are not involved in this procedure. The EU Commission intervenes here in national politics with far-reaching consequences without solid control of the added value of its actions. Last but not least, we should also mention that there has been a strong reduction of subsidiarity complaints by national parliaments. This is a result because this warning system doesn't work as it should. You know, uh, we have the chance with this recent opinions here to intervene. And the Commission should take account of recent opinions. But the problem is that this procedure doesn't work. We have since 2013 here, when we had, third, when we had 90 such opinions, now a development which is not good. The number had dropped only to 16 in 2020 and 35 in 2021. The reason is simple. National parliaments have realized that this yellow card procedure doesn't work properly. So far, there were no direct effects on the outcome. And since the Lisbon Treaty, since 2009, we had only three times, only three times a so-called yellow card. And we had more than 500, more than 500 of these complaints. Therefore, we should rethink this procedure. We need a new and more effective procedure. There, a whole new way of working was proposed when we had this high-level task force on subsidiarity, proportionality, and doing less but more efficiently in 2018. And we asked for a green card, a late card. We also asked for a system speaking of one in and one out principle. But since then, what we have seen was that the EU Commission didn't put the focus on more subsidiarity. I think it would be absolutely necessary for the Commission to take the Conference on the Future of Europe as an opportunity to put again subsidiarity back at the center of attention. So what I want to say is, I am glad to be able to speak here at the committee of the region, an institution that has always invested a great deal of energy in this important area and keeps doing so. I hope that it's possible that we not only look at the direct involvement of the citizens, it is important, but what we also need is a stronger and real involvement of national and regional and local representatives in the EU decision-making process. And I hope that together we can reach in this panel, in this group, speaking and discussing European democracy, that we are more involved. Currently, we are not sufficiently involved in this legislative and policy-making process. We have to change it. And I hope that together, the Committee of the Regions and we as national parliamentarians have the chance to bring the focus of the Commission again on this issue of subsidiarity to involve national and regional parliaments. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lopatka, and uh, happy birthday again. Uh, I would like to give the floor now uh, to Sandro Gozzi, uh, the member of the European Parliament. Mr. Gozzi, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President. I appreciate it very much, uh, this, uh, this initiative, and I'm very glad that I can come back uh, uh, to express myself uh, before the Committee of the Regions uh, as I, I did more than once when I, uh, I, when I was in government in Italy. So thank you very much for your, in, your, your, your initiative. And to me, uh, the, your presentation has, uh, has identified the, the key issue uh, that we have to address uh, uh, within the Conference of the Future of the Union, um, talking about our work in the Working Group on Democracy, because uh, the issue is how we... Uh, manage to reorganize and strengthen uh, the democracy and the link between uh, uh, political legitimacy and democracy within the European Union at all levels. And it, it is clear that we have uh, to work around the three levels uh, and the two dimensions, uh, talking about democracy. The three levels are the, uh, the local, local, regional, national and uh, European and the two dimensions uh, of, of, uh, of democracy uh, are the uh, representative democracy and the direct democracy. Uh, on, on the first uh, issue, on the issue of the level, I think that we have uh, to use, uh, to exploit all the potential of the Conference of the Future of the Union uh, to strengthen the link between uh, uh, democracy and political legitimacy about European issues at uh, all levels of our uh, governance. That means that uh, uh, we have uh, certainly at local level uh, better insert uh, the voice of the region and local authorities, especially through the Committee of the Regions in the European decision-making process of the Union, and there are very good proposals uh, that come on your side, for example, the issue of uh, the Parliament taking on uh, in its own initiative resolution a proposal, uh, legislative proposal made by the Committee of the Regions about uh, the, to which the Com European Commission doesn't issue a follow-up. This is just one example. But I think that also we have to work uh, around the issue of awareness and uh, information and participation because it is impossible to develop a strong le democratic legitimacy for the European project at local level without working on awareness and information. From this perspective, the, for example, the good practice of the EU councillors uh, who started uh, in Saint Omer with Mayor de Coste, who uh, has been uh, now already, uh, I mean, uh, they are a reality already in 1,300 uh, uh, town hall municipalities, and I know the Committee of the Region is working on that, to have, I mean, a, a legitimate member of a local council to be uh, the reference and the animator around the uh, debate at local level on, uh, on Europe, it helps a lot, uh, the uh, democratic dimension through awareness. And this is the first level. Uh, the second level, of course, is the national level. And there we have to use the conference to try to Europea Europeanize much more the role of the national political forces and the national debates. And we have uh, certainly to push much more uh, to have uh, a, a better uh, debates uh, at national level, uh, especially uh, when it comes uh, to uh, the time to take important decisions at European level and especially around the European elections. And that brings me uh, to the third point. And the third point is uh, how to uh, break down the Chinese wall that there is today between EU institutions and uh, politics and political legitimacy. Because it is clear that the main problem that we have, and I think that... Uh, We lost you. Are you still with us? 
Can you hear me? Yes, now yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I will start from the third level. I think that at uh, European... We lost you again, Mr. Gozi. Don't uh, push the... Please push the speed button. Push the, please push I did, I did, but I don't know why it it uh, it, it goes down. Well, I, I will I, I will I will start again. At, at European level, we have to uh, we have to uh, build up this uh, transnational political and democratic space that is missing. I mean, uh, and we feel it especially we as member of the European Parliament. Of course, we are uh, legitimate. We are elected. We are elected in a uh, I mean uh, in a direct democratic vote. Uh, uh, all over the continent, but what is missing in Europe is the, uh, a, tra a political dimension of politics. And this is uh, the reason is that we do not have uh, truly legitimate European transnational and political actors. And this uh, is one of the most important proposal, recommendations that have been made by the citizens, about which some of us are working, uh, are working, uh, have been working for a long time, uh, citizens propose uh, to directly vote uh, uh, the European political parties and uh, to directly vote uh, through the European political parties half of the members of the European Parliament. It's clear that, I mean, this is a very high number, but the fact that the citizens feel the need uh, to ask for a direct vote of the European political parties indicates clearly that they feel that we have to strengthen the legitimacy of the European political parties and movement. There is a strong legitimacy of uh, politics at local level. There is a national level. There isn't, a, there isn't at European level because we cannot vote directly the European political parties. And this is, uh, uh, you know that, I mean, this can be translated uh, into reality, this wish, this recommendation of the citizens by introducing a, a transnational list. And this is the work that we are doing in the European Parliament. Then there is, a, and I, I, I really, feel that we have uh, uh, to fill this gap with, uh, and build up this European political space. Then there is the other, the other two dimension of democracy to which uh, you, President, you were referring to. Uh, uh, direct democracy and representative democracy. I do believe that there is a synergy, there is a complementarity. I do believe that uh, direct democracy, as we are exper uh, uh, experiencing uh, with difficulties, of course, the new exercise, uh, with the conference of the future of union can nurture and strengthen also representative democracy. And this is why we have to see how we can turn into permanent processes some good practices and experiences of this conference. For example, this digital platform could turn into a permanent uh, tool of uh, direct participation and debate for the European citizens and dialogue between the citizens and the European institutions. We also believe, and it will be my very last point, that the proposal of the citizens to create the citizens' assemblies to, to, uh, to talk, uh, on, uh, to deliberate about uh, uh, the uh, ma main choices and the uh, annual uh, work planning of the European institution can be something that we should work on. You know that we are already organizing, the Commission is already, is already organizing at regional and national level this citizens' dialogue. The citizen dialogue could be transformed in sort of citizens' assemblies. And, uh, at, for example, at the beginning of the term, uh, or the midterm of the European Parliament, we could organize this uh, Europe-wide consultation starting from the local and regional level and this could be or could also nurture all the process and the debate uh, in the uh, EU uh, work planning, legislative planning, and uh, the president of the Commission could also give answers uh, to these citizens' assemblies uh, uh, in the State of the Union speech, uh, which uh, the president delivered uh, each September. This is only one example uh, that of the uh, of the innovation that we could introduce, not in competition with representative democracy, but while we must strengthen representative democracy, we could also be innovative on the other side. So these are my, my three points. Let's organize it better the, uh, the, uh, the European debate in the three democratic levels that we have. 
local, regional, and uh, national and European. Let's build up a truly European political space, starting with the transnational list. And let's also use the best practices that are emerging during this conference to promote new form of citizens' direct participation. Thank you very much again for your kind invitation. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Gozzi. Um, I would like now to give the floor to Arnoldas Prankevicius, the Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Lithuania. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you for your invitation. Best regards from Vilnius. Uh, and I'm very, very uh, happy to be uh, a part of this uh, plenary session of the Committee of the Regions and to greet you all. And indeed, it is a very important uh, uh, occasion to discuss uh, European democracy um, and uh, uh, the topic that is of particular, I would say, importance and uh, popularity within the Conference on the Future of Europe. Uh, last weekend, like many of you, like you, Mr. President, uh, and Mr. Gozzi and others, I had a pleasure to participate uh, in Strasbourg, uh, both at the European Democracy Working Group and at the plenary session. Uh, and not surprisingly, those debates were, I would say, the most active, dynamic, and intriguing, uh, especially on the democracy subject. And what really impressed me was the passion, the confidence, the knowledge that uh, our citizens uh, demonstrated uh, who gathered to discuss those complicated issues in Strasbourg. Uh, the recommendations we looked at, 39 of them in total, uh, are amazingly rich. Some ideas uh, repeat long-lasting institutional debates, which all of us are fully aware. Some other ideas represent uh, the need for better education and communication about the EU and its values, including awareness about disinformation. Citizens also call on us, representatives and institutions, uh, to communicate more about what we are doing in a less bureaucratic and more understandable manner. Uh, ideas on better inclusion of citizens to decision-making process are also popular. Uh, whether it would be lowering voting age or introducing new platforms where citizens could themselves share ideas and new permanent bodies where they could also be as observers and broadcast relevant information uh, about the EU. Last but not least, one, uh, 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 ones that suggest the constant need to build and strengthen European identity by reducing language barriers, by including information about the EU, by uh, also uh, including European subjects into education system. Of course, it will not be possible to implement all of those ideas. But we must respect the essence of people's messages. And the essence is that our citizens do really care about protecting and strengthening uh, common democratic values of Europe. Moreover, the leitmotiv which I took from discussions with our citizens in Strasbourg is that uh, we need to bring, bring European Union closer to them. Therefore, uh, I, I'm very happy that this discussion is organized by the Committee of the Regions, which indeed has a particularly important role to play in bridging uh, uh, Brussels uh, and our citizens in bringing in a very important regional dimension. Allow me to share some of the impressions about uh, the takeaways from the conference. I'm happy that citizens uh, 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 of the EU indeed uh, uh, see that uh, the conference uh, um, adheres uh, uh, to the great vision of ever closer union among the peoples of Europe. Indeed, we see that there are a lot of great and ambitious ideas uh, on more integration, uh, on strengthening of the European Parliament's uh, role, on uh, issues from net transnationalists to using qualified majority in many new areas. There are many suggestions that uh, aim to make the European Union more effective, more united, indeed, more democratic. And it is indeed important to have this long-term vision. Uh, to have this European dream, to be motivated by it and to fight for it. You do need wings to fly. But also at the same time, it's no less important to stand firmly on your feet and to use your hands to build the future, picking one brick after another, and indeed to be more realistic. And here comes the role of executive power and of every member state 
and institution involved in decision making. In this regard, let me make let me make four points. First, citizens feel that the EU is decision making and its decision implementation appears to be too slow. Furthermore, uh, what we saw from the recommendations of our panel, uh, uh, there is a huge space for improvement in terms of citizens' inclusion into decision-making process. It is a question whether we really need a treaty change to make it better, or whether we can, in fact, use the existing legal tools to make our union function better. And I think the COVID-19 story uh, is a very powerful one. When without a treaty change, uh, the European Union and the Commission took historical steps uh, to bring us all together and make us more united, whether through the uh, historic uh, joint procurement of vaccines or indeed through unique uh, recovery and resilience package that is our pathway to the collective uh, uh, recovery in, into a new green and digital economy. I personally think that sometimes we do not use enough uh, the full potential of existing institutions and existing treaties uh, to make them more uh, uh, de deliverable, to use all flexibilities uh, available for us uh, to have a more effective Europe. Also, uh, secondly, uh, uh, I share the view that the EU should work much more closely with all levels, especially the regional level. Citizens express that the real life takes place you know, where they live, local and regional uh, level. The principles, therefore, of proportionality and subsidiarity that other speakers have referred to are extremely important to respect. And in this regard, uh, again, the citizens uh, have many recommendations. Uh, they also call for new interactive, inclusive, uh, inclusive and easy to understand platforms uh, uh, so that we can indeed uh, uh, make, uh, make them better heard. Third, the success strongly depends on implementation and sometimes enforcement of our common decisions. And the rule of law, naturally, is unquestionably important principles. It is true that sanctions and fines are sometimes unavoidable. But real success comes only when we work together, institutions, national governments, and regional authorities when we try to reach consensus and when we avoid the situation where we, we have to, uh, 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 to, to, to revert to the need uh, of sanctions. And here again, uh, the role of the European Commission is crucial as a guardian of the treaties and as a facilitator, interpreter and assistant in the implementation process. Lastly, fourth, uh, citizens miss an effective link with Brussels at the political level. Now, this has a strong impact on, on, on uh, EU decisions as well. And in this regard, we should fully employ all actors in place, national parliamentarians and governments, MEPs and Committee of the Regions representatives, absolutely uh, uh, the commissioners from, from the national uh, individual member states and collectively as the commission, to bring Brussels debates and especially decisions closer to the citizens. Uh, let's be frank, European communication is a responsibility of all of us, uh, collectively and individually. And here I fully agree with President Titicostas, Mr. President, what you have said that the crucial role of the million local and regional elected representatives across all Europe is uh, very important in restoring people's trust in our uh, democracy. You as regional and local representatives are the ones uh, who uh, have the best understanding of hopes and fears of our citizens in their daily lives. And finally, a few words about transparency. Also, uh, the, the, uh, the aspect which was brought many times in the plenary and also in the digital platform and the working group, people are asking for more, more transparency, are asking for better communication, and here we have to make sure that uh, as a result of this conference, EU is becoming more transparent uh, and uh, uh, better accessible. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for this invitation. Uh, I hope that uh, we will find also new energy through this debate, how we can all build together a stronger Europe. And I look forward to, uh, to an active and stimulating debate. Thank you very much, Minister. It's been a pleasure to have you here today with us. 
And uh, the floor now to Webke Kingma, the COFA delegate uh, for the Netherlands. We are currently actually exploring a cooperation with Tilburg University on their project uh, on European values in education, including their European values atlas to continue our work beyond the conference. So I think your uh, uh, presence here is uh, very important, uh, Mr. Kingma. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Tsitsu Kostas, for this invitation to speak at this very important uh, meeting of the community for the regions. Um, there are actually strong similarities between the, the contribution of the uh, Committee of the Regions to the Conference on the Future of Europe and the Dutch approach to the conference. The Dutch government sees the conference as an opportunity to involve and question citizens. And that is why we have organized extensive citizens' consultations in a way that fits in our culture, in our public debate, taking into account three important uh, uh, elements, objectivity, representation, and inclusiveness. And the Dutch contribution to the conference consists of two parts, our citizens' dialogues, uh, which were organized by an independent organization, and we questioned more than 13,000 Dutch citizens about their ideas and opinions on the future of Europe. In addition, we also asked the Netherlands Institute for Social Research to update an already existing survey on what the Dutch public thinks and wants from Europe. And the Dutch consultations or the results of our consultations have been completed and the results have been shared with Parliament and with the conference. So what has, is coming out of all, uh, all the Dutch uh, consultations? Um, the general picture is that the Dutch support the EU membership, but at the same time are critical about its costs, um, about more competences uh, to uh, Brussels, and our citizens wish for more transparency. And the three main topics of which the Dutch think that the EU should act are climate change, security and the rule of law, and migration and refugees. Since today's session focuses on uh, strengthening democracy in the EU, I would like to take a closer look at the results uh, on that topic. The Dutch do not want to know everything about the EU, but they do want more transparency and more insight. They also believe that the EU should enter into a dialogue with citizens more often and preferably on a permanent basis. And the majority of the Dutch consider European democracy an important theme and believe that the EU should make advancements. The specific recommendations uh, include providing a broader perspective on Europe. We feel that when the media address Europe, the, they is often done in a negative way in the Netherlands and in crisis situations. And the citizens feel that they don't feel enough, uh, they don't hear enough about the day-to-day -day, uh, decision making. They indicate that they don't need to know everything, but in order to form a good opinion, they would have, like to have a better overall picture. For instance, they would like to be better informed about perspectives in other member states. The media and education can play an important role in this, uh, in this field. But the media must continue to be able to make their own choices because we very much feel that press freedom uh, is uh, very important in our democracy. Then um, our, our citizens ask for new and lasting ways to listen to them. The majority of the Dutch think that the EU does not know uh, enough about what's going on in society. And to improve this, the EU should engage in more frequent and preferably permanent dialogue with its citizens. Many Dutch people consider our conference, the Conference on the Future of Europe, a very good initiative. Uh, according to some, 
ref referenda can also uh, be a valuable instrument, but not all citizens in the Netherlands agree on this. For some uh, themes, they feel specialist knowledge is needed and there then uh, referenda become a bit more complicated. Then they would like to be, have more transparency and clarity about decisions. They think that Europe is quite complicated and they want the EU to become more transparent and to make it easier to stay informed. They find that uh, the, the official challenge, uh, channels too often are very difficult uh, and too complicated to understand. And every citizen has different interests and different needs. And uh, you, it, would be, it should be more easy to find the information about the topics that interest you. For instance, young people are very often very interested in Europe, but very little can be found on Europe on the social media that they use. Then they would like to, to uh, make the decision making faster. We find it difficult to understand how European democracy works and uh, the, the decision making seems to go very slowly oftentimes. In European uh, elections, uh, Mr. Gosi has spoken about it already, we mainly see uh, partnerships of national par parties and perhaps there are other ways of dealing with European interests. About a third of the Dutch think that you, you should be able to vote for foreign candidates in EP elections. About the same number, however, of the Dutch people does not agree. The most important that they find is that the different interests are sufficiently taken into account. And that at the same time, and it is very difficult, decisions can be made faster compared to how it's currently done. Next to the explicit wish of citizens for more information and transparency, the Dutch government has also launched the Transparency Pledge together with Germany and Denmark to promote, to promote the importance of transparency as an issue in the Conference on the Future of Europe and to collect new ideas and wishes from the population to shape a new transparency agenda. It allows people to understand and follow how decisions are taken which policies are formulated and how their interests are taken into account. All member states, including three European commissioners, 15, 50, 50 members of Euro the European Parliament and the European Ombudsman have signed the pledge demonstrating that the demand for more transparency is a widely supported initiative. I'm almost finished, Mr. Chairman. Besides the recommendation as an outcome, the process itself of the conference of the, on the future of Europe is also an outcome. This is a new way of involving our citizens. We have not done anything like before. Uh, just a few points regarding the, the process that will affect and determine its success. It is highly important that the recommendations in the final report reflect the wishes and ideas of the citizens. After all, this is a bottom-up process in which citizens and their input are central. In addition, it's equally important that the report contains concrete recommendations which are feasible. And the, U the EU institutions should be able to follow up on them. It is important to show the citizens that their ideas and their opinions are being acted upon and Europe delivers. Without it, the conference would undermine the public support for the EU and that is the last thing that we want. In addition, uh, it, I think it would be a good idea to look back on the process afterwards and see what we can take forward as best practices to increase citizens' participation in the EU. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And uh, I will now give the floor to our members. So I would suggest that we start with Orget Geblevich from the EPP for four minutes. You have the floor. Okay. 
Mr. Bock. Thank you, Mr. Speech. President. Thank you, Hello. Mr. President. It's a pleasure. Dear colleagues, members of the Working Group Democracy, it is a pleasure to have you with us and debate openly on the way forward to European democracy. I would like to thank you for your meaningful proposals, both in the conference plenary and here also in the plenary session. I can assure you that European regions and cities would like to see not only a more democratic European Union, but also more European policies which deliver to citizens. We believe that democratic and representative democracy together with participatory democracy are complementary and we have found successful formulas for practicing them in our regions. This is a huge asset of citizens' trust, regional expertise and political responsibility, which we bring to the table of the conference. This is also the source of our proposals for making EU decision-making even more democratic, accountable and transparent. I would like to name just a few of the proposals. We propose that the existing early warning mechanism in which national and regional parliament are engaged is given real chances to work. This means extending the deadline for subsidiarity scrutiny. Another proposal. We will propose to boost parliamentary democracy in the EU by the creation of a green card procedure, which to allow significant member of national or regional parliaments to propose EU legislation. Last but not least, let me remind you that during the conference, the region and cities have organized the majority of the 5,000 citizens' dialogue. We should use this asset and create permanent mechanism for dialogue with citizens, which is place-based. Instead of speaking about national issues on the European elections, I believe that we'll be better off discussing with citizens the territorial impact of the EU policies in such a mechanism. Dear colleagues, this conference is first of all about democracy and the European way of life. If we have democracy, we have everything. If not, we have nothing. So in this context, I do believe that we need to strengthen the role of the local and regional authorities in our union. In the end, all democracy is local. A stronger role of local and regional authorities and regional parliaments means a stronger voice of European citizens. The local level set the example for the national level since opinion polls consistently show that local elected representatives inspire high levels of trust among citizens. So in the end, I do consider that the Committee of the Region current position within the European Union's institutions no longer reflects the political importance of local and regional authorities in the European integration policies and I think that the Committee of the Region should be gradually upgraded from an advisory body to a co-deciding body of the European Union on the policies with a territorial impact. That's all I want to say, dear colleagues, and thank you so much for um, your attention. Thank you, Prime Minister. The floor now to Monsieur Rouillon from the PES. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Chers collègues, ceux qui ont eu la chance de suivre les travaux de la dernière Assemblée plénière de la Conférence sur le futur de l'Europe ont senti l'impatience des citoyens au regard du processus mis en place pour renforcer la démocratie européenne. Les recommandations adressées aux institutions sont claires et ambitieuses. Il faut étendre les compétences de l'Union européenne pour répondre efficacement aux attentes des Européens. Face à l'incapacité des États à gérer seule la crise de la Covid, l'Union européenne a montré son utilité. L'enjeu est maintenant de prévenir les futures crises. De, 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 les futures crises. Seule l'Union européenne peut mettre en œuvre des actions efficaces pour le social, le climat, la protection de l'État de droit, la diplomatie, la défense militaire. À l'évidence, nous souffrons de pas assez d'Europe et non pas de trop d'Europe. Plus d'Europe, c'est la voie de l'avenir. Mais plus d'Europe doit s'accompagner de plus de démocratie européenne. Premièrement, il faut repenser nos règles concernant l'unanimité qui rend la prise de décision dans certains domaines comme la taxation, par exemple, extrêmement difficile. 
Deuxièmement, selon les données Eurostat, il y a 13,3 millions de citoyens d'un pays de l'Union européenne qui vivent dans un autre État membre. C'est pourquoi la famille socialiste est favorable à des, à des listes transnationales pour les prochaines élections européennes. Enfin, l'Union européenne est souvent perçue comme hors sol. Pour ancrer l'Europe et reconnecter l'Europe avec ses citoyens, il faut affirmer la place du Comité européen des régions comme assemblée politique. Assumons l'ambition d'une assemblée législative européenne qui fera entendre la voix des territoires. N'ayons pas, pas non plus de tabous et de fausses pudeurs. La révision des traités sera indispensable pour réussir le saut démocratique d'une Europe plus forte, plus efficace, plus intégrée et donc plus respectée. Merci de votre attention. Thank you very much. Ms. Tuto, please. Thank you very much for the floor, Mr. President, dear colleagues. I, I think I'll give you a different view. Um, I read at all the citizens' recommendations. I've been in the panel. I went through the report from the digital platform. And what I've seen there, it doesn't reflect on my reality for being a local politician for 20 years. There is like a very, very little engagement in the digital platform. We absolutely miss women from the digital platform. We have really, really small fresh citizens who actually contributed. I, Deputy Mayor of Budapest, we are really pro-participation. We are doing a lot. I've been personally engaged in how more and more citizens engaged in this process. I try to engage a lot of colleagues, mayors, local mayors to engage in this process, in the digital platform, to add in their ideas. And I failed. So, What I see is participation is a thing we are committed to, but we have to build it up from the bottom up. We do it with, uh, with participatory budgets in Budapest, with these citizens' assemblies, but it doesn't come from one day to another. It's a very, very long process. There's a lot of ambition shown in the recommendations, but we all know that there are already a lot of things happening, a lot of changes happening. And my reality is I'm responsible for transport, waste, water, uh, climate change, that it's not so easy for citizens to digest so many changes. Yes, there is a small group of citizens who always push for more, but there is a silent majority who need time to adapt. So yes, we have to build it, but to move to In, to in citizens of Europe, it has to be through us. It won't work otherwise. Thank you. Thank you. Monsieur De Coster from Renew Europe, please. Oui, merci, uh, Monsieur le Président, mes chers collègues. Uh, je crois que, euh, avec euh, mes collègues du groupe Paola Fernandez Fiana et Beria Vecaferre, comme tous les membres du comité des régions euh, qui participent à la conférence sur l'avenir de l'Europe, nous sommes marqués euh, des réunions plénières euh, qui se déroulent à, à Strasbourg et avec les autres orateurs de mon groupe, Dietmar Brokes ou Tobias Gotthard, euh, nous allons essayer de l'exprimer. Nous avons entendu une impatience des citoyens, une impatience des citoyens européens qui sont attachés à la démocratie. La démocratie, elle est née en Europe. Le projet européen, il est né justement aussi de cette volonté d'affirmer la démocratie sur notre continent. Et aujourd'hui, les propositions, les recommandations des citoyens doivent nous guider vraiment aussi dans ce que nous allons pousser aux côtés de nos propres propositions. J'ai notamment beaucoup d'intérêt sur les recommandations 24, 27, 29, 32 ou 37 qui demandent plus d'éducation sur la démocratie européenne, plus d'interaction entre les niveaux européens et les citoyens, qui demandent plus de participation des citoyens européens. Finalement, le groupe de haut niveau, euh, présidé par euh, Herman Van Rompuy, euh, traduit bien en mettant en avant, comme le fait notre résolution, 
trois dimensions de cette démocratie européenne, la démoc la, le niveau européen, le niveau national, le niveau local. On peut faire encore mieux sur chacune de ces dimensions. Les listes transnationales qui sont chères à Sandro Gozzi, que je remercie de sa participation à nos côtés, à nos événements, non seulement cet après-midi, mais à d'autres occasions, sont un élément de cette nature. Il faut aussi que nous renforcions nos, nos relations avec les parlementaires européens. Je crois que certains qui sont élus sur des listes nationales peuvent être davantage encore dans les territoires aux côtés des membres du comité des régions. Et encore une fois, Sandro Gozzi l'a fait encore il y a quelques jours avec nous-mêmes. Nous avons exprimé beaucoup d'idées sur la subsidiarité. Dans la task force sur la subsidiarité qui a rendu son rapport, voici déjà plus de trois ans. Je crois que ça doit être une contribution essentielle avec toutes ces propositions pour la conférence sur l'avenir de l'Europe. Et on le voit bien, le comité des régions s'organise pour pouvoir être ce relais de proximité ce sont les correspondants Europe, les conseillers Union européenne. Je crois que le comité des régions devrait faire en sorte qu'il y ait une animation par les membres élus du comité des régions, une animation politique pour pouvoir le faire. Je crois que nous avons encore, dans ce qui représente notre quotidien, à apporter, à contribuer à l'animation de cette démocratie européenne et dans la construction de la norme, bien évidemment, au travers de nos avis également. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, M. De Coster. Um, Mr. Giampetti, from the ECR now. Grazie, Presidente. Cari colleghi, ho l'impressione che oggi, come lo scorso fine settimana durante la plenaria della conferenza, stiamo assistendo a un dibattito univoco sul futuro dell'Europa, che sembra andare sempre di più verso una visione centralizzata dell'Unione e non lascia spazio ad altre interpretazioni. Dopo aver letto le raccomandazioni dei panel dei cittadini sulla democrazia europea, è ancora più chiaro che attraverso la conferenza si stia portando avanti un'agenda centralista. E mi trovo d'accordo con la collega Tutto che probabilmente questi panel hanno un orientamento abbastanza organizzato con poche persone che partecipano. E reputo anche da analizzare l'idea di fare le liste elettorali transnazionali per le elezioni europee, che secondo me non farebbero altro che allontanare il, la distanza tra eletto ed elettore. Dubito che l'estensione del voto ai sedicenni possa essere la panacea dei mali dell'Unione Europea. Il futuro della democrazia europea richiede un dialogo permanente tra cittadini e i loro rappresentanti eletti e una chiara comprensione delle necessità e una maggiore titolarità del progetto europeo a tutti i livelli di governo più coordinamento e interazione fra i diversi livelli di governo, locale, regionale, nazionale e europeo, sono essenziali per consentire all'Unione Europea di migliorare le proprie credenziali democratiche. A tal fine è necessario un maggior coinvolgimento dei livelli locali e regionali nel processo decisionale, perché essi rappresentano il livello di governo in prima linea per quanto riguarda l'impatto delle norme europee. Molto può essere fatto in, senso, in questo senso eh, dentro alle strutture esistenti per rafforzare l'unione e la democrazia. L'unione deve fare di più per aumentare la cooperazione fra parlamenti nazionali e regionali. Allo stesso modo occorre riflettere sul ruolo delle istituzioni rappresentative regionali e locali. Se da varie indagini dell'Eurobarometro risulta che i cittadini europei riposano maggiormente la propria fiducia negli enti regionali e locali, ci si chiede perché l'importanza dell'apporto delle regioni al processo decisionale europeo non sia sottolineata a sufficienza. Ritengo che non può più considerarsi un tabù all'interno della discussione del futuro dell'Europa la riflessione riguardante una più compiuta partecipazione delle regioni al processo decisionale europeo. Questo dovrà compiersi attraverso il Comitato europeo delle regioni, un comitato rafforzato nel suo ruolo politico nella sua influenza del processo legislativo. Senza una dimensione forte territoriale, la democrazia europea rimarrà un progetto incompiuto. Grazie, Presidente. Grazie. Mr. Van Luwe, from the EA Group, please. Uh, 
Dank u wel, voorzitter, ook achtbare collega's. Ik wil uiteraard de sprekers bedanken voor hun zeer interessante uiteenzettingen. De toekomstconferentie vraagt zich terecht af hoe de Europese democratie kan versterkt worden. En die vraag beantwoorden is absoluut nodig. Met Brexit besloot namelijk de UK het Europees project jammer genoeg te verlaten. Het idee dat al te vaak beslissingen worden genomen boven de hoofden van de burgers speelde daarbij ongetwijfeld een belangrijke rol. Maar dan kunnen we ook kijken naar de lage opkomst bij Europese verkiezingen. En ik ben ervan overtuigd dat concrete manieren mogelijk zijn waarop de Europese Unie democratischer kan worden. Te veel lees ik echter in de tussentijdse rapporten van de Toekomstconferentie ideeën over de superstaat, over een rechtstreeks verkozen president, transnationale lijsten en dergelijke meer. We moeten ons toch wel de vraag durven stellen of dit hetgeen is waarop de burger zit te wachten. Volgens ons moet de Europese Unie zich inzetten op haar stichtend motto, met name eenheid in verscheidenheid, door in te zetten op die actieve subsidiariteit, zoals de resolutie van ons Europees Comité van de Regio's reeds heeft aangehaald. Zo zorgen we ervoor dat beslissingen dicht bij de burger mogelijk worden, bijvoorbeeld op regionaal of lokaal niveau. Zo zal er geluisterd worden naar de burger, want het zijn wij lokale en regionale politici hier in het comité die weten wat leeft bij de bevolking. En dan moet ook de rol van nationale en uiteraard regionale parlementen versterkt worden en betrokken worden bij de Europese besluitvorming om te waken over die subsidiariteit. En zo pleit ik voor de invoering van een groene kaart om wetgevende initiatieven te steunen, maar ook voor een rode kaart om Europese initiatieven zo mogelijk tegen te houden. En zo'n boodschap is iets waar de burger nood aan heeft. Iets concreets, iets tastbaar. En dat is ook de invalshoek vanuit het Vlaams parlement waaraan wij volgende week in een event zullen werken. We moeten durven nadenken aan die zelfreflectie over de Europese Unie om een beter Europa te krijgen. Ik dank u. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hassler from the Greens. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, die Arbeitsgruppe Europäische Demokratie bearbeitet einen Themenbereich, der bei den Bürgerinnen und Bürgern auf großes Interesse stößt, den institutionellen Rahmen der EU. Dieses große Interesse haben wir auch bei den Menschen bei uns in Baden-Württemberg gespürt. Wir haben in unserem Land eine ganze Reihe von regionalen Bürgerdialogen durchgeführt, einige auch grenzüberschreitend. Aus unseren Bürgerforum wurde vor allem deutlich, dass die Bürgerinnen und Bürger sich eine handlungsfähigere Europäische Union wünschen. Und ich möchte hier vier ganz konkrete Beispiele aus unseren Bürgerdialogen vorgeben. Eine stärkere Willensbildung in der EU für eine wirksame Stimme in der Welt, etwa mit Mehrheitsentscheidungen in der gemeinsamen Außen- und Sicherheitspolitik. Eine Weiterentwicklung des institutionellen Gefüges der EU, auch explizit mit einer Änderung des EU-Wahlrechts. Drittens eine stärkere und niedrigschwelligere Öffentlichkeitsarbeit der EU, zum Beispiel mit einer Online-Plattform. Und viertens mehr Beteiligungsformate über die Zukunftskonferenz hinaus zu konkreten Fragestellungen, zum Beispiel durch Bürgerformen mit zufällig ausgewählten europäischen Bürgerinnen und Bürgern. Ich finde, wir sollten diese Rückmeldung von den Bürgerinnen und Bürgern ernst nehmen und nun auch echte strukturelle Reformen anstreben. Daher ist es wichtig, dass sich im Abschlussdokument auch die Anregungen der Bürgerinnen und Bürger wiederfinden. Ich freue mich sehr, dass unser Entschließungsantrag heute viele dieser wichtigen Anregungen aufgreift, insbesondere die partizipativen Elemente. Abschließend ist es mir ganz besonders wichtig, dass wir rechtzeitig klären, wie der Folgeprozess zur Zukunftskonferenz aussehen wird und wie Ihre Empfehlungen dann auch konkret umgesetzt werden können. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you, Ms. Fernandez Viagena, please, from Renew Europe. Muchísimas gracias, Presidente. Queridos colegas, el pasado 2 de noviembre de 2011 organicé un debate ciudadano en la Universidad de Cantabria organizado, protagonizado por jóvenes de Cantabria. Un diálogo con especialistas en la materia que hicieron hoy su voz, expresaron sus opiniones y expectativas y reflexionaron sobre la democracia europea, los valores que asisten a la Unión y los espacios de libertad, de justicia y de seguridad a los que se aspiran. Permítanme compartir algunas ideas que están en el documento de conclusiones que elevaremos a la Conferencia del Futuro de Europa. 
La primera, dotar a la Unión de recursos presupuestarios propios, destinados a los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible establecidos y supervisados por el Parlamento. La segunda, reconocer la importancia del derecho a la información veraz. La tercera, la necesidad de reformas ambiciosas que garanticen la promoción y protección de valores europeos. Y la última, la refundación de la Unión sobre el principio que proclama las tradiciones constitucionales comunes de los Estados miembros exige profundizar en la democracia a todos los niveles, local, nacional y europeo, en la toma de las decisiones políticas. Termino, señor presidente, diciendo que la Conferencia sobre el Futuro de Europa sea el germen de un ejercicio de reflexión y de participación ciudadana que perdure en el tiempo. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Mr. Brokes, please, from the Renew Europe Group. Ms. Marinova, from the EPP Group, please. Уважаеми колеги, благодаря господин председател. Говорим за създаване на нови модели на диалог и обсъждане с гражданите на ниво Европейски съюз с цел укрепване и допълване на представителната демокрация. Всъщност, на местно ниво ние разполагаме и днес с достатъчно възможности. Притежаваме също опита и познанията. В моята община ползваме интернет платформа, за да обхванем максимален брой граждани. Чрез нея не само се предоставя актуална информация, но това е и една интерактивна възможност за провеждане на местни инициативи за справяне с конкретни проблеми на общността. В тази връзка нямам съмнение, че ние можем да помогнем за намаляване на пропаста между европейските институции и гражданите. Ясно е, че имаме една цел – да направим европейските институции по-ефективни и прозрачни, поставяйки гражданите в центъра – Принципът на партньорство и моделът на многостепенното управление могат да допринесат значително за по-добрата комуникация на целите и резултатите на политиката на Европейския съюз. Надявам се и европейските институции да оценят нашия конструктивен принос и той да намери своето отражение след конференцията. Благодаря сърдечно! Благодаря ви много! Мистер Бирбас, пожалуйста, от ПС група. Ο κύριος Μπίρμπας παρακαλώ. Ναι, ναι. Ε, κυρίες και κύριοι συνάδελφοι, και εγώ με τη σειρά μου θέλω να τονίσω. Ε, συγγνώμη γιατί είμαι με κορονοϊό και δεν μπορώ να μιλήσω πάρα πολύ καλά. Ε, θέλω να τονίσω και εγώ με τη σειρά μου την, και να ευχηθώ καλή ε, συνέχεια και επιτυχία στις προσπάθειες της ομάδας μας. Έγινε φανερό και μέσα από την διαβούλευση αυτή, έστω τη μικρή με τους Ευρωπαίους πολίτες, ότι τα μεγάλα προβλήματα της συμμετοχής των πολιτών, της διαφάνειας και του μεγάλου δημοκρατικού ελλείμματος που περιγράφουμε σε όλες τις αποφάσεις μας, είναι μια πραγματικότητα για την Ευρώπη. Θεωρώ ότι το ψήφισμά μας κινείται σε πολύ καλή κατεύθυνση και θα πρέπει να συμπεριληφθεί παρέα με τη συστάση των πολιτών γιατί κινείται σε παράλληλα, παράλληλα προς αυτές και να, απο, και να αποδώσει αποτελέσματα σαφή στην, ε, στο μέλλον της διάσκεψης. Τονίζω δύο πράγματα μόνο. Ότι είναι εξαιρετικά σημαντικό το να προχωρήσουν η, ε, η ευάνση της δημοκρατίας και ότι για αυτή την προσπάθεια χωρίς ενεργό επικουρικότητα και ε, ουσιαστική λειτουργία της αρχής της πολυεπίπεδης διακυβέρνησης δεν μπορεί η Ευρώπη να έχει καμία προοπτική. Συμφωνώ απόλυτα με τους προηγούμενους συναδέλφους που τόνισαν ότι πρέπει να δοθούν και οι οικονομικοί πόροι και οι δυνατότητες στους πολίτες και με τη χρήση των ψηφιακών μέσων και της πλατφόρμας ούτω ώστε να εκφραστούν αλλά παράλληλα να μπορούν να λειτουργήσουν με αξιοπιστία σε όλη την Ευρώπη. Σε ευχαριστούμε πολύ Δημήτρη και περαστικά. Εύχομαι ταχύ ανάρρωση να πάνε όλα καλά και σύντομα να επιστρέψεις γερός στα καθήκοντά σου. Σε ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Uh, the floor now to Alcina e. Burgess, uh, from the EA Group.
Mr. Frey from the Greens, please. Herr Vorsitzender, meine Damen und Herren, Ziel einer lebendigen Demokratie sollte es sein, möglichst vielen Menschen die Möglichkeit zu geben, ihre konkrete Lebensrealität und ihre Zukunft aktiv mitzugestalten. Eine vielfältige Demokratie braucht daher Einmischung der Bürgerinnen und Bürger. Dabei geht es nicht darum, die repräsentative Demokratie abzuschaffen, sondern sie sinnvoll zu ergänzen. Beteiligung unserer Bürgerinnen und Bürger gibt Impulse für die öffentliche Auseinandersetzung, schafft Identifikation mit dem Gemeinwesen und bereitet die parlamentarische Entscheidung vor. Ein Kommentar noch zu einem Vorredner, wenn Sie mir gestatten. Die Veränderung der Anzahl von Richtlinien und Verordnungen als Gradmesser für, die Funkt für das Funktionieren unserer Union zu verwenden, halte ich für zu kurz gegriffen. Es geht doch vielmehr darum, dass wir als ganze Union kohärent handlungsfähiger werden gegenüber dem Klimawandel, bei der Migrationsbewegungen und für eine gemeinsame Außenpolitik. Damit sind wir als Europäische Union wirksamer und werden uns von unseren Bürgern auch als Einheit wahrgenommen. Vielen Dank. Danke schön, Mr. Gotthard von Renew Europe. Sehr geehrter Präsident, die gesetzgebenden Landesparlamente spielen auch dank ihres Einsatzes eine direkte, aktive und pragmatische Rolle in der Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas. Ein wichtiger Schritt hin zu einem verfassten Europa der Regionen, aber ein Weg, den wir weitergehen müssen. Ich habe deswegen mit meiner Fraktion und anderen Änderungsanträge zur heutigen Stellungnahme formuliert. Es ist ein leidenschaftliches Plädoyer für eine Beteiligung der Regionalparlamente. Wir sagen Ja für eine starke, verfasste Rolle der Regionalparlamente im EU-Gesetzgebungsprozess. Wir sagen Ja zur Weiterentwicklung der Subsidiaritätskontrolle und wir sagen Ja zur direkten Demokratie, aber nicht auf Kosten der repräsentativen Demokratie der Regionalparlamente und des ADR. Regionalparlamente sind und bleiben die Herzkammern und der Schmelztiegel eines Europas der Bürgerinnen und Bürger und äh, sie wollen und müssen berücksichtigt werden. Ähm, wir sind dabei sicher nicht bequem, aber wir sind bürgernah und das zählt. Vielen Dank. Danke schön. Uh, Mr. Peterson from the PES Group. Mit Ende går nu på vores resolution, så jeg ved ikke, om jeg skal komme med det nu. Så gør jeg gerne det. We can hear you, we can see you. Go on. Tak. Det går altså på resolutionen som vi har nogle ændringsforslag til, øh, fordi vi mener, at det er faktisk er et, en god resolution, hvad der er altså nogle ting, vi er uenige i. Og det er, at vi for det første ikke mener, at regionsudvalget skal have en rolle som en medbestemmende instans, øh, som der står i den. Fordi hvis vi bliver et reelt ankammer i beslutningsprocessen, så vil den blive mere kompliceret, den vil blive ineffektiv, og det er ikke i nogens interesse. Og i øvrigt vil så også det økonomiske og sociale udvalg også skulle have samme rolle. For det andet mener vi faktisk, at EU ikke skal have flere beføjelser på sundhedsområdet, som der også står i resolutionsforslaget. Vores sundhedssystemer i EU er ganske forskellige, og den forskellighed, den skal vi altså værne om. Den nuværende EU-lovgivende er tilstrækkelig til, at medlemslandene kan tage fælles beslutning, så når det er nødvendigt. Det har vi jo set under pandemien. Og endelig sidst, så er det jo sådan, at den europæiske søjle for sociale rettigheder, ikke efter vores mening skal være et regelsæt, som der står, men vi skal fastholde dem som principper og ikke ændre til et sæt regler og lovgivning. Så det var vores for den danske delegations. Thank you very much. Alcina Iburges, please, from the EA Group. Are you available now? Okay. So, benvolgudes i benvolguts, el govern de Catalunya ha volgut participar en veu pròpia a la conferència sobre el futur d'Europa i ho hem volgut fer en la mesura que estem uh, totalment compromesos amb els valors democràtics, els drets humans i el respecte per les minories. Ho hem fet fent dues activitats diferents, per una banda Més enllà d'aquesta plataforma digital multilingüe s'ha dissenyat una enquesta online perquè els ciutadans ens poguessin compartir les seves preocupacions i organitzant una sèrie de taules rodones, en concret vuit per tot el territori català, 
per tractar tots els temes que s'han posat sobre la taula en el marc de la conferència sobre el futur d'Europa, així com afegir-hi dos temes que són importants per nosaltres. Primerament, l'oficialitat del català a les institucions europees, en la mesura que és la tretzena llengua més parlada, i així mateix també la necessitat que nosaltres entenem que existeix, que la Unió Europea reguli i es posicioni sobre el dret a l'autodeterminació i la consegüent ampliació interna. En aquest sentit, aquesta conferència ha estat una bona oportunitat per demostrar que el futur és Europa i que Europa ens ha d'escoltar. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, dear colleagues, um, dear guests, I would like to thank you all for being here with us uh, and uh, for your participation and contribution today. It is true that only together we can ensure the success of this conference and the added value, especially the added value for our citizens. So again, thanks uh, to all of our guests and our members who have participated in this discussion, very important discussion. I will now pass the floor to someone you know very well, uh, our former president, President uh, Marco Marcula, who was uh, so kind to accept my proposal to chair uh, the rest of the evening because I have some uh, very important bilaterals to attend to. So Marco will be chairing the meeting from now on for uh, a resolution uh, and some opinions and also, of course, for the voting slots, the one that was uh, cancelled early, postponed earlier, and the one that we have uh, later on. So, without further ado, I would like to give you the floor, Marco, for chairing uh, uh, our second day of the plenary session. And I really want to thank you and all of our uh, members for being so active and participative in, in this very important two-day um, two session that we had, plenary session. Thank you very much. <laughs> 